Hello everybody, it's David with TraderTours.com and if you like what I do here on YouTube, please check out my website TraderTours.com and consider subscribing so you can follow my exact trades. Today I want to go over a free video lesson and point out one of the biggest flaws that most investors make and that is trying to buy more stock as it continues to drop. Now you can make this mistake with stocks, commodities, mutual funds, you name it. And people refer to this as dollar cost averaging, and it sounds very logical to think that if a stock is selling for 100 and it falls to 90, it's a better deal to buy it at 90 because it's cheaper. Well, the truth is you should be doing the exact opposite. You want to be buying something as it works in your favor, not when it's working against you. So I'm gonna walk through a couple examples today to illustrate this. So if we look at AIG here, it was hovering around that let's just call it $1,300 uh, back in 05, 06, 07. And it started dropping. So as it drops, it falls, falls, falls. Suppose it gets to 1,000 here and you look and say, hey, this is the lowest price it's been for three years or so. This is an absolute steal. So you buy more. To your amazement, it continues to drop. And suppose it hits 750 and you say, well, I want to buy more because this is 250 points lower than when I bought it. So it's an even better bargain. Well, it continues to drop. You buy more at 500. And if you have any money left, suppose you buy at 250. Well, if you average those together, again, dollar cost averaging is the term people use for, for this. Uh, your cost average would be six, 625 if I did my math right. Uh, so yeah, 625. So when you look at this chart, this is a 10 year chart, one, two, three, four, five, six, for the last six years, it hasn't really done much for some poor soul that's hoping for it to get to 625. And if I don't say so myself, I would say the odds are it's not going to get to 625, certainly any time in the next several years, and it probably won't even do it in our lifetime. Now, the mistake is you are way underwater. You're hopelessly waiting for this to come back in price. And meanwhile, all your trading capital is tied up because you progressively bought more as it fell. So people often say, well, I'm going to hang on and I'm not going to sell unless I make a profit. Well, the magic question is, when? When is it going to come back? And a lot of times it doesn't come back. So if you never plan on selling, you might as well be just throwing your money right out the window because 100% when you put in is going to be lost if you never sell. So let me show you a trade that I made where I did well on. Uh, I'm going to pull up Nike here. Um, what I did is the exact opposite. I bought my first share. Well, I bought more than one share, but I, my first entry was done at about $35. And it was around its all-time high then. People were saying that this is a bubble. It's the highest it's going to go. And that's crazy. Well, it kept going up. I bought more at 45. Kept going up. I bought more at 60. And my late last purchase I made was right around 70. So as you can see, that's the exact opposite of what most people do. And this is proof that trends are incredibly powerful. And if you want to make money, you have to trade with the trend and not against it. The key with this strategy is if you're going to pyramid and buy more as the stock increases, Make sure you do it in consistent or decrease in increments. For example, if you bought 100 shares here at 35, you're not going to go buy 200 shares if it goes to 45. You're either going to buy 100 shares or less. So maybe something like this. Buy 100, buy 75, buy 50. Because nothing's going to go up forever. But the whole idea here is that trends are far more powerful than people give them credit for. And they can move a lot longer than people think.